Hello Fun Nation, and welcome back to Fun Analysis, the show where we break down the best and most innovative strategies in first every single week. My name is James Osterhaus, an alum and former driver for Team 107 Robotics and a current robotics student at the University of Michigan. Go Blue. This week, we'll be diving into some of the highest levels of play we've seen yet this season at Finals 2 in the Silicon Valley Regional. We're also going to talk about how this will lead up to strategies on the grand stage of first, Einstein. Without further ado, let's dive into Reefscape here on Fun. This video on Fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to AndyMark.com for your one-stop shop of high-quality and affordable solutions. All right, so let's hop right into the fun analysis here. Uh, in this match, Finals 2 here at the Silicon Valley Regional, last ever SVR, which is pretty exciting for the California districts next year. Um, highlighting six teams here in the finals, we have Team 1323, that's Madtown Robotics, two-time world champions. Their first pick up here at the top of the screen is 5940 Team Bread. And their second pick is also another great team. That's team 649, the end set, Fish. Over on the Blue Alliance, who, although we won't talk about them as much as our powerful Alliance 1 over here, we're still going to talk about some of the stuff they did throughout the match. We have the captain. It's team 581, the Blazing Bulldogs. Their first pick here at the bottom of the screen, that's team 3045, the Gear Gremlins. And in the middle, their second pick is team 668. That's the, the Apes of Wrath. So without further ado, let's hop into Auton. Auton uh, 1323 is going to do their signature uh, collection over here of the preloaded items. Really awesome Auton that we're going to talk a little bit more about as we get into the championship discussion. Um, but they're able to get all four of their coral um, in this Auton. Pretty impressive there from 1323. And that's complemented by up here at the top of the screen, 5940 is going to grab three coral as well as an LG removal which you can kind of see down here at the bottom of the screen, they're picking up this algae. Um, and we're gonna talk about that in a second as they go into Telia. Over on the blue side of things, um, they have been in other matches like Finals 1, been able to get six coral up on the top of their reef, um, which was pretty impressive there. We got 30, 45, the gear gremlins is pretty consistently putting up three. Unfortunately, in this match for 581, they missed two coral. Um, in Auton, which really hurt them uh, coming out of a disadvantage into Teleop is something hard to come back from, especially when you're going against an alliance as good as Alliance 1 here with Madtown and Red. That being said, let's hop into Teleop. So I'd like to highlight this super cycle we have here from Red. Um, so watch as Bread, they go right to the processor right here with the LG they already collected. They also, right before they did that, they picked up a coral. So what are they able to do now? After they score in the processor, they're able to go score that coral. While they're doing that, they also just descored this coral right here, I mean this algae right here. That's the, gotta be the super cycle to, to end all super cycles. Pretty impressive work from them. Um, that, that's the bread robot right there. Um, we're gonna see bread continue to score uh, coral and the processor here. They're gonna score one coral up on the top of the reef and grab this algae as well in the super cycle. They're gonna score in the processor. So that 1323 right here on this bottom part of the screen is able to cycle completely alone. The traffic is completely removed from them. This defense here from uh, team 668, that's the Apes of Wrath, is completely focused on 5940 bread, allowing 1323 just to go to town. And although 1323 clearly the better robot with the 112 EVA in this match, um, 5940 is just completely unstoppable as well. And the Apes of Wrath clearly identified that they had no chance in defending 1323 in their ground intake, so chose to do that uh, with bread as well. So um, going in here to two minutes, we're gonna back up a little bit to watch 581, they're gonna score, attempt to score this algae here at the top of our screen right here. Um, but this actually happens a couple times throughout the match where they don't line up properly and they're gonna miss that algae shot. And that's something that really hurts them. Um, 
throughout this match is because they need to be capitalizing on every single point. And as we get to Einstein and the higher levels of play this season, you need to be capitalizing on every, every kind of point. LG misses will decide high level matches as well as how many coral you can fit in the level one trough. We're gonna see 1323's human player consistently rolling out the coral, just like we saw right there. And in fact, watch 1323's human player right here, is they're gonna roll this one and it's gonna go all the way and until it hits, hits the deep cage. That's ridiculous. I wanna see um, how they're doing it because that's just allowing 1323's ground intake just to pick up all these low hanging fruit all around their side of the field and work basically undefended because of the protected zone. So really incredible job by them. We're gonna back up here just a minute um, to 151 as we're gonna talk about the defense over here from MSAT Fish. They know that they wanna defend 3045 the gear gremlins. Really strong offensive robot on the side, on the blue alliance. And they sit here in the middle of this alliance station and that allows them to defend whichever um, coral station 3045 is gonna to go to. So if you watch, 3045 is going to come over here and, and they're going to try to pivot, but 60, uh, 649 is going to meet them right over here at this coral station. And even if um, the gear gremlins pivoted to this coral station over here, 649 was there to meet them. So you'll see them throughout this match. And as you're watching 1323 and 5940 do these powerful cycles, glance over, over every once in a while and we're going to see um, that 649 MSAT fish robot um, just hanging out over there. Pretty impressive job. Um, the other kind of style of defense we're gonna see, watch the Apes of Wrath down here. They're trying to defend Bread by pushing all the game pieces away from Bread. They're pushing Coral, they're pushing LG away. We'll see them just go, go down the wall because they can't do anything with the protected zone. Um, there that 1323 and, and Brad are taking the advantage of. So well done by them to try to do something defensively. And that's something that we're gonna talk about um, as we go into the season, um, deeper into the season like in Einstein. How is that second robot making a difference? Because I don't know if defense truly is the best way for that robot to make a difference. Unfortunately, we're gonna see um, a few penalties from uh, 668 um, on Bread uh, throughout the match. Um, if we back up here to like 123, I believe it was, um, let's watch them right here. They're gonna contact, you'll see the referee wave his flag frantically. Um, that's just gonna be one of those tech fouls that's gonna rack up a few, I believe 24 foul points throughout this match, causing it to be the uh, not unpenalized high score uh, despite its 263 uh, mantra that everybody saw when the scores were posted. That being said, let's continue on. Um, something that I thought was pretty funny um, watch Bren right here as they're about to push this Coral all the way across the field. Are we going to see Coral passing? We'll see. That was a pretty crazy bump from them. We can watch that again. I I think that's uh, a pretty funny moment there from them as they're able just to, I don't know if it's their intake or their bumper that hits it, but it just flies. Um, and those these Coral are quite the agile game piece. And it's another reason why um, that defense of Coral and game pieces uh, is something that can cause chaos in Alliance. Obviously, there's only so much you can do with it because there's just so much of it. Uh, but as Coral and LG become more and more scarce, uh, defense of that uh, might be one of those things that we see at the higher level of play. Um, another 581 LG attempt here. Um, unfortunately, that's I think this is one of three misses throughout the match for them. Um, those are just the things that, although definitely didn't make the difference in this match, at the highest level of play um, might make a difference. Those super cycles they're able to do though, where they're able to grab and score um, both Coral and Algae at the same time, pretty impressive from them. Um, so let's back up here a second to 103. Um, we're gonna see 1323 begin their trough cycles. And one of the things I love about 1323's robot is their ability to just pick up with their ground intake and just place it right in the trough. I think that's gonna be a really big advantage for them. And we're gonna see as we get into the depths of this match, um, how advantageous that is as they're trying to stack them. The question is when we get to Einstein, is stacking coral in the troughs gonna be the difference maker? We shall see. We'll also see if we run out of coral, I'm not too sure. We'll see 1323 continue to place um, some coral there in the, the level one trough as 581 is going to try to place another LG. Um, this is their final LG miss here. Um, that's something I think we'll see more from the human players than we will from our robots. Um, but I've seen some human players and that's something worth actually noting here. Uh, this human player you can see is holding on to two LG 
um, to kind of shoot till the end of the match because he knows that he has a better chance of making these shots than the robots do. So the easier shots when there's less coral here in the trough, uh, or sorry, in the in the barge, he wants the robots to be able to do those. And then he's going to put those in when there's like 20 seconds left or so. Uh, so that's an interesting strategy that I've seen kind of all throughout uh, week two and three now. Um, at 42 seconds here, let's back up a second. We see 3045 um, fall uh, to one of the unfortunately common uh, parts of algae in this game. And it's actually because of defense. Watch 649 MSET fish push 3045 onto this algae here. And that causes them to be completely incapacitated. And 581 is going to have to take some time out of their way here uh, to go push 3045 off of that algae. I think that LG is obviously one of the more dynamic elements of this game, and when you score it is obviously important based on the whole LG race potentially that we'll see in Einstein and everything like that, um, but also because it's an obstacle, and robots getting stuck on it is problematic, um, and we'll see if that ends up. I saw some robots that were even putting LG from the red side of the field onto the blue side of the field to try to act as these landmines. We'll see if that ends up being a more prominent strategy or if people are just scoring the LG uh, to begin with. So as we move towards the end of the match, we're going to see 1323 continue uh, to do these trough cycles. And at 25 seconds remaining, I really love to see them. <laughs> They're going to actually stack uh, too high onto the trough right here. Watch this. <laughs> it's like back to 2018 power cubes. I mean, we're stacking three high now. We're stacking coral up and up and up. Uh, the question will be how much coral can we fit in that trough. Um, as we go into endgame, we're going to see pretty consistent to what we've seen throughout Reefscape so far. Two deep climbs here from red as well as the park. Um, on blue, we see this robot here. That's 668 grapes or Apes of Wrath. Um, they're going to, or actually this view is better right here. They're going to sneak in here, but they're actually going to be touching. I think that's 581, the Blazing Bulldogs. And that's going to cause them to get two parks in a deep climb rather than uh, two deep climbs in a park. So if you're that third robot, just be really careful um, not to run into those deep climbs because you don't want to lose out on those very big points. We'll see 263 for the high score here. Um, pretty impressive. That's 239 unpenalized because of the 24 penalty points there that we talked about. But overall, incredible job by both alliances. What an exhilarating match to watch. Uh, it's going to be really exciting to see how we move forward from here, right? What is there else to do? You know, the reef is essentially full. The trough is starting to fill up. LG scoring hasn't been fully capitalized on, and I think that's really where we're going to see um, the transition to Einstein level strategy. Like, where do we go from here? I think that the role of the third robot is the most debatable part of that, right? Um, do you keep it as a defense robot? Right now, at the regional and district level of play, defense seems to be the uh, the go-to strategy for most alliances, especially the one, two, and three alliances. Um, but the lower alliances, they might be better off with some kind of triple offense. Now, how do you effectively play triple offense? I'd recommend uh, later this week, uh, we might have another fun analysis video on that, so why don't you check that out when that's out. Um, but I think there's another way to do that. Um, and I look, think back to how 148 in 2018 played kind of this far side of the field attacking role. They would steal power cubes, um, and I think that a far side of the field attacking robot um, is potentially advantageous. I think that if you're stealing algae and scoring in your um, in your barge, as well as even stealing coral from all over the ground um, on their side of the field, and then going back to your reef and scoring that, all while playing the opportunistic defense that everybody loves to throw out there as a buzzword, I think that has some potential. And you'll see me kind of drawing that idea out on the on the screen right now. I think that that um, that third robot could be that Einstein level difference that makes it possible for an alliance to win Einstein. I think you need an Auton, an Auton like 1323's um, collection Auton of the preloads, coupled with Bread's style of Auton with a feeder station. And then if your second pick can run a two or three piece Auton um, starting from the middle that works around that preload, um, you're able to get like 10 or 11 pieces in Auton. And that's like 86, 78 points in Auton 
that's ridiculous. And um, I think that's those really peak scores that we're going to see as we get to the championship level of play. Uh, and then tally up how many coral can we stack in the L1 trough. There's only so much coral on the field will we run out. If we're starting to run out of coral, that's when the LG race will come into play. How quickly can you score LG? Can you score the opponent's LG? That's where that attacking robot stealing that LG can come into play. We'll see. That attacking robot might not even end up being the second pick. Maybe that's your first pick and your captain and your second pick are the one cycling Coral. We'll see what that looks like at the championship. I'm really excited to see that develop. Um, I also think that when LG best being scored is a question and also when is it best put in the processor. Um, it's kind of like there's a different rate of return, right? Because you score get six points for scoring in the processor, but four because the other alliance will be able to score that in the barge, so it's a net of two. Well, if it's harder for the uh, alliance, the other alliance to score the coral, maybe you're going to end up with a higher net score than just scoring it in the barge yourself. So I think as the match progresses, maybe scoring it in the processor is more advantageous. Or it's a mix like we saw in this match here, where Bread scored in the processor, but Mad Town scored in the barge. We will see how that develops. I'm really excited to see. I think this game is going to be excellent at the highest level of play in the grand stage of Einstein. With all this being said, who are your week three MVPs? How do you see Reefscape developing as we start to think about champs? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Funalysis, and until next time, James Osterhaus, signing off. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or a $2,000 individual price when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details.